Hey folks, Todd Colburn here with your Aerospace Structures series. This lecture is on fasteners, specifically on bolt bending. So typically when we see fasteners in aerospace, because in aerospace we use a lot of very thin sheets, and the thinner the sheet gets, the less eccentricity that actually occurs. So for this reason, a lot of times we're going to neglect bolt bending in aerospace. Let's just take a look at a typical uh, fastener, that, uh, like a rivet, that's attaching a couple sheets of aluminum, as we see here. We see that if this is a force P, we see the line of action of this force is through the midplane of the sheet. And this force P, the midline of that is through there. So the total eccentricity, we can call it E, okay? The eccentricity, is T of the upper sheet over two plus T of the lower sheet over two, and that is the total eccentricity. If we wanted to look at the moment in this bolt, we would see it's just the force that's transferring times this eccentricity we calculated right here. That's the moment in the fastener. Now, if the sheet is really thin, then this eccentricity becomes quite small. The moment is small. And there happens to be some eccentricity in any bolt test or joint test, which means actually if our sheets are thin, then the allowables, those fasteners, probably account for a little bit of bolt bending. And for this reason, we can neglect it. And it also, as that sheet gets thin, the rotational stiffness of the sheet's very small. So if you start pulling on it with any kind of moment, that bolt can't actually pick up a moment. What happens is the sheet rotates. As the line of action rotates, it rotates until these line of actions are basically lined up, which means there's no real moment. You get a slight moment due to the couple between these two, but it ends up damping out and nothing flat. So if you look at this, you see you have like a little moment that dampens out, a little moment that dampens out within a very short distance. So the bending is the sheet gets thinner, then you end up getting basically a tiny moment that actually dampens out in a short period of time. And for some of these reasons and the idea that some of this is already accounted for in the allowables, sometimes we'll just neglect or often neglect bending. However, if our sheets are very thick, then bending is more important to be included and it can be quite difficult to show good. So uh, in Arrow 3261, we're going to ignore bolt bending unless I ask you to evaluate it. Now, we'll do that sometimes just to make sure you can. In that case, we will calculate the moment on the joint, and then we will find the moment allowable for the bolt and write our margin of safety as the moment allowable for the bolt divided by the moment due to the eccentricity minus 1. Now, if you don't have a moment to allow of the bolt, no problem. You will then just calculate the bending stress on the bolt as MC over I, where I is just, or C is just the diameter of the bolt over 2, and I is just the moment of inertia of the round shank area of the thing, and calculate the bend, uh, bending stress, and then your margin of safety would be your FTU of the bolt divided by your bending stress minus 1 can use either of these uh, ways to evaluate that. Now, when we get a uh, butt joint, the butt joint is designed to not have an eccentricity. Let's we're, say we have a butt joint of a couple sheets with some plates here like this. And let's say we have a fastener here and a fastener here. So we can see this is the force here. We can see half that force is going to be going through here and half that force down here. Now, this is designed to have like a net zero eccentricity between the lines of action, but there are some secondary moments that develop. If we just imagine that this force here, half of it's carried up here and half of it's carried down here, then that means, and this is reacted as P over 2 here and P over 2 down here, then we can see that actually this P over 2, which is running down at half of this, so this is T over 2 over 2, which is actually T over 4 is that piece. So our eccentricity now is going to be the thickness of the upper plate divided by 2. That's the distance from here to here, 
plus the thickness of the middle plate divided by 4, because it's P over 2 is the effective for this half P, and, P, and half of that is that thickness, okay? So our moment is now the force, which is P over 2 going to the upper plate, times the eccentricity, which is calculated here. And then we can evaluate the same way, okay? We can do the same thing for the lower plate and check it, and whichever one has a smaller margin of safety would be critical. But what if we have a joint that has some eccentricity? For example, this picture here from Brune's text. In this case, you'll notice that this is a loose fastener, like if we have a clevis. Uh, these are very common. A clevis will have extra room. You just drop the one plate in, shove a fastener through, and there tends to be a gap. If that's the case, now it looks here like we've got two gaps, and this is one of them. But actually what's going to happen is if we have any gap, we will calculate the total gap, right? We'll just shove that plate over to one side, take the total gap. Now our eccentricity, once again, is going to be T of the upper plate over 2 plus T of the middle plate over 4 plus any and all gap. And then our moment is simply PE. We can do the same thing. This is the eccentricity for the upper plate, the eccentricity for the lower plate. Now, if these two plates, uh, upper and lower plate, have the same thickness, then they will have the same eccentricity. If they have different thicknesses, then this would be T lower over 2 plus T middle over 4 plus any and all gap. And the moment, this is the upper plate, the moment for the lower plate is now PE, where this is E lower and this was E upper. And we can evaluate that the same way. Now, if these are thicker, what will happen is whichever plate is thickness, whatever plate is thicker, even though its bearing margin of safety will tend to be lower uh, or, or higher, uh, less critical, the, uh, it will tend to give you more bolt bending if it's going to a thicker sheet. So if this is not balanced, then we may need to analyze both. So that's how we analyze bolt bending. Let's take a quick look at some practice here. Okay. To make sure that we can do that. And uh, if we take a look at this joint, we see that we have uh, two fasteners, which means the force per fastener is P over 2, right? That's the force per fastener. P over 2 transfers the fastener. Our eccentricity is just if, let's say, they're the same thickness, if they're the same thickness, then it's just T over 2 plus T over 2 equals T. And that means our moment is just going to be the force per fastener, which is P over 2 times t, or let's leave that e, but times that eccentricity, whatever that is, okay? Let's say we have a different joint. Let's say we have a butt joint. In this case, we can see, for purposes of bolt bending, we're going to get this force, half that's going to transfer each fastener, and then it's going to have two directions. We're going to get half of it going up, half it going up and down. That means this one takes p over 4, this takes p over 4, this takes P over 4, and this takes P over 4. That means our force for bending is going to be P over 4. Okay? And then we can look and say, okay, what's our eccentricity? It's actually T upper over 2 plus T middle over 4 plus any and all gap. And our moment then will be the force, which in this case is P over 4 times the eccentricity. Got it? Is this force goes half of the transfers here, half of it here, but only one half of that half goes up and one half of that half goes down, making it P over 4. So that is a really simple video on how to analyze bending of fasteners. And uh, there's a lot more you can do with that, but for the purposes of this class, that's all you're going to need.